If you've ever delved into the competitive side of online games, you've probably encountered one of a few things. People blaming their team, people asking for advice on how to climb the ranks, and the famous last words, just carry harder. I spent a long time playing a number of competitive games from League of Legends, World of Warcraft, Soul Calibur, and Blaze Blue, with the most recent addition to my roster being Rainbow Six Siege. I've poured hundreds upon thousands of hours into each one of these games, trying to get better, to climb the ranks, and prove to everyone and myself I'm just as good as I say I am. It was a good while ago when I came to this conclusion, it was about Season 3 in League of Legends. I would snap call mid and pick some carry, usually Fiora or Katarina, and I would do pretty well. My kill death was usually quite high, I'd have a lot of farm relative to my team, and on paper was carrying. Yet time and time again, I was faced with losses. Either my team wasn't there to capitalize on my plays, or I just couldn't manage to clean up a fight in the way I wanted, and I'd be staring at a broken nexus. It crushed me. I was barely able to get out of Silver 4, yet I knew I had the ability to be gold at the very least. When someone tells you to pick a top tier character and carry your team, you stop approaching the game as one part of a 5v5, and instead are playing 1 vs 9. Every mistake your teammate makes is more weight on you. You'll take more risks, you'll play more selfishly, and you'll put your team at a disadvantage all for the sake of maximizing your own chance of success. The problem with this is that your success and your team's success are not synonymous. I realized I was my own problem. I was focused too much on carrying my team, taking them for idiots. I never trusted them. I put my team at a disadvantage immediately when I queued up. I wouldn't even be in a game and I had already lost. So I gave it up. I picked up jungle and I started playing utility characters like Nautilus or Sejuani. If I wasn't jungle, I would play support on Sona or Morgana. Nothing meta, but my win rate skyrocketed, and with over 800 games that season, I finally saw gold. When season 4 rolled around, I did it again. Despite the fact Nautilus was considered a bottom tier pick, I continued playing him and saw incredible success. The season after that, when he wasn't even considered a jungler anymore, I still made it work. My knowledge of both the character and my dedication to being the ultimate team player made it extremely easy for me to win and lead my team to victory, not carry them. They weren't weight. They weren't a burden. They were the key to my success. This doesn't just apply to games like League, either. Siege is very much the same way. In Siege, there is a term called trading up, which applies most commonly for roamers, but is more or less true for everyone, where the idea is, at minimum, to kill one person and deal damage to another, so you effectively cause more damage to the enemy team than you've taken yourself. This term is definitely something that helps to detail the dynamic of health economy, as well as causing people to think more carefully about their plays. Or, as I've seen, it gives people a reason to put blame on others. In a situation where you kill one person to damage another, you've traded up. But if you are already 2 vs 5, then you're leaving your teammate with 4 people to deal with with only one softened up. But that's okay, because you did your job as a roamer. You aren't to blame for the lost round, right? The mentality continues into character selection. Too often do I see my team pick Jaeger, Ella, Pulse, and Kavira, and then sit on objective holding angles. They know these characters are strong because they're played in the pro leagues. The subreddits and message boards tell them how overpowered Ella is and how great of a solo queue hero Kavira is, yet they know nothing else. Their lack of game sense combined with poor and undefined advice has led them to make subpar picks for what they believe is the correct course of action or for what their personal playstyle is. This, either inadvertently or intentionally, shifts away the impact and weight that utility-focused characters have. Absolutely no one is going to tell you to pick Thatcher or Mira every game despite the fact these operators are practically linchpins in the competitive meta. In many games, like Siege, League of Legends, or Overwatch, you really can lose the game on the character select screen. How useful is your Hibana if you have no way to deal with Mute or Bandit? How great is that Vayne pick if your support is playing Brand and farming kills? Do you even have a hope of making it onto the point on Temple if you have 4 offense heroes, a Roadhog, and an Ana? For many people, playing these characters is not very fun. You rely not only on the other parts of your team being team players, but making the correct picks. It's all because they're going into it with the idea that they have to be the hero, the scoreboard king. I'm fairly certain that's how the idea of the toxic Ash main came around, given how close she is to the game's interpretation of a one-man army. Communication is key, and a single callout could easily win you the round. But if you've resigned yourself to playing selfishly, you might not even be watching cams or drones when you're dead. You're tabbed out on YouTube or Facebook. It's no wonder, despite having a positive kill-death ratio, you're not getting out of bronze or silver. Now the real question is, if this advice honestly sucks, why does it go around a lot? Looking at my own stats, it's kind of easy to understand. My win-loss ratio as well as kill-death ratios are quite high on characters like Kavira and Ella, yet they're a little lower on my most played characters such as Smoke, Rook, or Valkyrie on defense. On offense, well, it's kind of a different story. <laughs> I'm not exactly that great at offense, admittedly, and my only positive win-loss ratios being on characters like Sledge, Buck, and Thermite. Played well, characters like Ash, Kavira, 
or Ella are deadly and can win games by themselves. I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten a good flank as Cav and end up putting three people on the ground and giving my teammate two to three interrogations in a row. Yet on the flip side, I probably have just as many situations where I've gotten too aggressive and I end up as the first death. They're volatile and people only usually remember the good that they have. They tune out their own mistakes and misplays because they can't see them in the heat of the moment. I sometimes have to remind myself that despite my success with her, I'm not some legendary Kavira player, and when push comes to shove, I drop onto my Smoke or Rook. Those characters have just as good of a ratio as her, and frankly, they're much more reliable and consistent. At the end of the day, I don't think carrying your team is a particularly viable strategy unless you really are that much better. The issue is, if you are that good, it doesn't matter what you're playing. You'll outshoot and outfight anyone who's worse than you. The first step to being a good player is admitting you're probably not as good as you think you are, and figuring out what you need to improve on. Be the team player. You'll find your success comes much more consistently than if you spend every match trying to get a nate or a pentakill. This is especially good advice if you're like me and you can't aim to save your life. <laughs>